Hi, I'm Dominic Davis, founder of Pink Therapy, and I'm really delighted to be bringing this message that we are, have decided to partner up with our colleagues across the pond, Kink Knowledge. That would be us. Kink Knowledgeable. Across the pond. Across the pond. That's you. We Hi, have... Hello. And I'm Peter Chirinos. <laughs> Don't interrupt him, money. Thanks, guys. Um, it's, it, it's, a, it's been a very exciting set of uh, conversations that we've had over the uh, previous few months, and we've decided to partner up um, because we think that we have a shared vision about the way in which our complementary uh, products, training courses, online training courses, uh, complement each other and develop each other's work. So we're very excited by, by, this, um, by this process, aren't we? And we are as well, yeah. Yeah, so I'm we're Peter than, Chirinos. We're more than excited. We're yes. delighted, thrilled. We <laughs> and we're, we're, we're um, Peter Chirinos and Caroline Chavez from we Kink did Knowledgeable. <laughs> did we? No. Did, well, we interrupted him, so. Which we do quite often. But this goes to show that we, we really enjoy your company, Dominic, and very excited about the partnership. Um, Right? Aren't we? I think so. We, are we being serious now? Yes. Okay. Well. So what we want to share is our absolute delight that we've partnered with Pink Therapy. Their courses are amazing. They've been doing this for 35 years, training people on LGBTQ issues, in the UK and Europe and around the world. And what we found in our many conversations, and there's, there's Dominic smiling, <laughs> is not only do we like each other and have this amazing connection, even though we've never physically met, um, we share very similar visions and passions about bringing this education to the world and to therapists who are interested in understanding people of alternative sexuality. Um, it's rare to find that kind of connection with people. And the fact that we've found that with you, Dominic, mm. it's just awesome. It's cool. It's cool. It's and, cool. I think, and I think the other thing too that Kink Knowledgeable and Pink Therapy has in common is this, this notion and this ability to be able to um, push the boundaries of what is considered typically traditional kinds of education around behavioral health training and specific topics around kink and BDSM and race and gender and sexual orientation. Um, it really makes this partnership a very unique partnership compared to other training programs that are outside, both in online as well as in person. Well, I think one of the, one, one of the great things that, um, we're able to do through online training is reach people across the world. So whilst our partnering up with you will um, enable us to have APA, American Psychological Association, continuing education units, which will be very good for tapping into an American market, We've got students studying with us from across the globe and being able to, by being able to partner up, we can kind of share our knowledge um, in, through social media and the like and help us tap into new markets, right. new countries, uh, spread the word so that we can both have more students uh, raising their knowledge of how to provide quality mental health mm. to very diverse populations of uh, sexual and gender minorities and, and, and yeah. yeah and in that particular process I think that the it's not only raising the awareness in, in terms of the specific type of treatment but it's also a raising awareness of your own therapeutic your own personal kinds of understanding of topic areas that you may be treating so it's the it's about treating the client, but it's also about professional therapist development and what is it that they need to learn about themselves in working with folks who are very different 
than who they are outside of their work persona. Sure. Dominic, one of the things that I've said to you before is my reverence of you as a pioneer in this kind of educational genre. And I think that um, while BDSM is a very small niche of knowledge within the broader realm of alternative sexuality, it's still a pioneering venture in the world. Sure. And it's so much more important these days as BDSM becomes more prevalent in mm. social and cultural discourses. And are we allowed to say Fifty Shades? We're not allowed to say Fifty Shades. <laughs> we're not. We're not allowed to say that because that really raised a whole lot of people's awareness mm. of BDSM. Yeah. yeah. Whatever we think about the the, the quality of the literature literature or the the films it actually brought a lot of people into kink clubs going into 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 dungeons going into sex shops and learning or becoming interested it kind of gave them permission yeah and they're showing up in the consulting room yeah uh, they're they're often getting themselves into all kinds of complex relationships and trying to figure stuff out and they need they need quality therapy from people who can really understand more about the social context and what's going on for them. And, so, and whilst I don't really approve of the film, you know, or the books, I think it's, it's a bit trashy. It's really fired up the yeah, society yeah. in and the I West, think, at least. And I also think that it's also music as well. Rihanna, I think she came out with yeah. a song called s &M back in 2011, 2000 yeah. something. Yeah. But, but, but as you said, Dominic, the issue is how do therapists that are not trained, not familiar with the genre, but in effect come from a therapeutic culture of pathologizing mm -hmm. people who practice BDSM. How do they now address more and more clients in their therapy rooms yeah. around this issue? Yeah. And while there are cultural differences and uh, national interest di differences in terms of legal uh, ramifications and so on and so forth. The essence of the issues are, in our opinion, very similar. Mm -hmm. So by partnering with you and your team, and your team providing the translation that may or may not be required with students, I think that our partnership um, is going to be very beneficial to the community of professional therapists. Let me just unpack that a little bit because um, what, what you talked there about was uh, kind of the cultural context, the social contexts are, are a bit different. And that was one of the th first things that nationally I was different. nationally different. And one of the things that I was, I, I was, first concerned about when, when we started our conversations was, well, how much of what you're saying in America is going to fit the UK kink context? Mm. Right. Um, because is, is it because it's, kink is practiced in a very different way. Certainly by, by my community, the kind of gay leather men in America, they have a very different kind of social networking system. So how it is much more uh, advanced and bigger and, and more organized. We don't have that here. Um, and so I wanted to kind of get my hands on some of the materials and think, now, how is this? Is this adaptable? Is it translatable? And you offer a tutorial system for your students, which I think is really good to be mentoring the students through the program. And so what I was um, offering was some of our faculty are very experienced in King and could work with UK students to Correct. do mentoring in this context so they can study your materials Correct. and they can be having tutorials or mentoring sessions or coaching yeah. with some of our faculty. And I think that was, a, that's going to be another one of those kind of positive spin-offs as a result of our partnership. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something, Dominic, do you, do you think that there's also as a, in addition to a cultural kind of difference, do you think that there's also a difference in terms of generation and how, gay GSR identities and BDSM identities get expressed and integrated within the community? Probably so. 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think younger people are becoming much more open to the idea of certain, certain in certain areas of the kink community. I mean, in the UK, we have the puppy scene, which has become very popular. And, and I know that's a big thing in the States now that 20 years ago wasn't really around and older members of the kink community um, may have problems with and look down upon some of these younger kinksters who are just running around wagging their tails at them. Right. And don't really understand that. Yeah. And I, th I think that's, you know, it's, it's a great area for helping, helping different aspects of the community understand each other and the different kinks that are, that are happening within the community. Yeah. And, and I think that that, you know, while research is catching up with practice mm -hmm. in, in this genre, there is increasing um, quality research that backs mm -hmm. up some of these differences. Um, but I want to go back to say something about um, cultural nuances. Those cultural nuances are not just national. They're also mm. within the BDSM mm. genre, sure. the multiple types of subgroups that are now mushrooming, like you mentioned mm. the pups. Mm. Um, if people are watching this and they want to know what that means, take the course. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to highlight is because of the 50 Shades of Aurora, um, there is now more heterosexuals coming out and participating in some form of BDSM activity. Mm -hmm. And that is being seen, I think, in most Western democratic countries around the world. Um, the problems that some of these people are facing are not typically those of isolation and alienation, mm -hmm. but stigma. Mm -hmm. and discrimination and persecution, um, which plays out in, the place, in places like the workplace and or in divorce court. Sure. So, so therapists, ther therapists really need to understand <laughs> in what ways are people being stigmatized and also in what ways are they being discriminated against and mm -hmm. how therapy as a profession and therapists are contributing to that in the work that they do. I mean, we, we can talk forever about yeah. these. We often do. And we often do. And we enjoy talking to you, Dominic. Uh, it's great. I love, I, I love our conversations. After my Friday afternoons have not uh, <laughs> be empty without our little time. <laughs> it's been great getting to know you two. And yeah. you know, the other thing, Dominic, is that the, the Connection across the pond has been very creative. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll we'll be making further announcements about some of the things that we are we are uh, yeah that we're planning. Um, not now, but in in a few weeks' time. Yeah, uh, and it's very exciting. It's yeah. very exciting sitting down with you and your glass of Chardonnay on your Friday afternoon on Friday morning. <laughs> I have not had Chardonnay on Friday afternoon. Evening, evening. Evening, they were the evening ones. <laughs> I make myself wait till six o'clock. <laughs> Sadly, we live in a society where we're filled with um, into food intolerances and stuff. So Chardonnay is slipping off that list, right. isn't it? Right, absolutely. Sugar. Mm -hmm. sure, but yes but we really we're really very excited about this cutting edge endeavor between think therapy and kink knowledgeable yeah. and we're very proud to be associated with with you dominic and kink therapy and your work thank you great i'm really looking forward to this